Metarot Perfect Edition is an enhanced remake of Imagineer's robot battling RPG, Metarot, originally released on the Nintendo Game Boy in 1997. Much like Pokemon a few years prior, Metarot was originally released in two versions, Kabuto and Kuagata versions, and the Wonderswan port is no exception. They were developed by Natsume and released on May 4th, 1999. Seeing as how I'm midway through Kabuto version on my Wonderswan, I decided to capture all of the footage for this episode on Kuagata version. While the name Metarot might not be familiar outside of Japan and a few European countries, you may have heard of Metabots, the name it used here in North America. Both names come from combining the words metal and robot, for reasons that will become clear in a second. Metabots are assembled from multiple parts, a head, two arms, and a pair of legs. All of those parts get attached to a basic skeleton called a tin pet, and then to complete the package you attach a metal. Metals contain the mind and soul of a metabot and have an affinity for a certain type of combat. Kabuto metals, for example, are better suited to shooting related parts, such as arm cannons, and Kuwagata metals specialize in melee combat. The version of the game you choose to get determines the metal of your starting metabot. Kabuto version gets you Metabi, the series mascot, and Kuwagata version gets you Rokusho, which usually appears as Metabi's rival in all other metabots media. While both of those metals are based on types of beetles, rhinoceros beetles and stag beetles respectively, metals based on many different kinds of animals exist, each with their own specialties. Across both titles there are 240 metabot parts and therefore 60 metabots to collect, including those released separately on the Game Boy in the Metarot Parts Collection expansion game, and they can be traded from one copy of the game to another via the link cable. The story revolves around a young teenager named Hikaru Agata. While playing catch with his dog Bonaparte while they're out on a walk in the park, he accidentally throws something at a member of the Robo Robo gang, who then drops a metal on the ground. Hikaru tries to do the right thing and hand it in at the local select office, the peacekeeping unit who aims to protect the world from metabot related crimes, but he's told that he can keep the metal. Upon his return home, his dad notices the metal and gives him a tin pet and parts to assemble the mascot metabot for the version of the game you chose. The Robo Robo Gang, analogous to Team Rocket from Pokemon, spends most of the game causing trouble around town and trying to recover Hikaru's metal. Without wanting to spoil anything, the game serves as a prequel for the anime, which was still two years out when the original game was released, and establishes backstory for one of the main characters. Metarot Perfect Edition's big selling point is its graphical upgrade, primarily in battle sequences. To be honest, I can't really tell if there are any graphical upgrades outside of battle compared with the Game Boy version. In battle though, everything looks much nicer, and the widescreen and higher screen resolution makes the battle UI feel much less cramped than it was on the Game Boy's 160 by 144 pixel display. The Game Boy used to combine all of your Metabot's HP into a single life bar, but the Wonderswan screen is big enough to fit a breakdown of the HP for each individual meta part, which is far more useful in battle. All of the sprites for the Metabots are brand new and showcase the series' beautiful character designs. The battle animations are fantastic, though somewhat long, and while they can't be disabled, they can be sped up in the settings. The basic events of Metarot were reused as the framework for a Game Boy Advance remake of sorts called Shingata Metarot. The game is effectively retold with a new cast of characters and a rounder, more cartoonish art style which was incredibly controversial when it was originally released. I think a lot of the charm of Metabot's character designs were lost in the new art style, and if that's important to you, I would advise you to stick with the Wonderswan version if you intend to play the first game in the series. If you're more interested in the gameplay and want some quality of life improvements, you might want to check out Shingata Metarot instead. There's one more unique thing about this game, and that's the opening sequence. When The Wondrous One was originally announced in October of 1998, Bandai showed off the system's ability to play full motion video. While it was technically possible, it wasn't very practical, as 1.3 seconds of video would eat up over 1% of the biggest ROM size available to developers on The Wondrous One. Natsume somehow found some free space to jam a few seconds of video on there, and while it isn't a super impressive sequence, it is an interesting technical fact about this game. Metarot Perfect Edition is by no means a top-tier Wonderswan JRPG, but it is a great B-tier RPG. Especially if you're a fan of RPGs involving collectible creatures, such as Pokemon or Dragon Quest Monsters, you should give this game a shot, as it offers a unique take on the genre, and its story gets pretty crazy later on. Obviously, your enjoyment of this game is likely to be limited unless you can read Japanese, but if you can and you're interested by what you've heard so far, you're in for a treat.